things and your emotions yeah, and Lord, try and yeah, Lord. Lord. You see, with this, oh, okay, that's that. Yeah, no, one, I want yeah, to Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna come back to you. I'm down on my knees. We're talking the peace deal signed between Mary and Dr. Hamilton and Dr. Hamilton. I'm gonna announce in the song. Deportation is not the answer. Document as many people as possible. Okay, it's not here by the time this is done. Let's talk about this. No, 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 we can't. Remember, we can't. Can you hold me? Is he coming in here? Oh. Oh. Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. Yeah, Twitter, Twitter. 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 Twitter,
so we can give you a shout out on radio. So type where you're watching from so we can give you a shout out on National South African Radio. Tinondia Uyu. Is that how it's said? Where is that? It's just fast. Okay, yes, that's the website. What are you doing after here, guys? Tino Mambeu, Tino Mambeu, Tino Zimbabwe, South Africa. Oh gosh, no, we still have, we still have political problems to run tonight. What does it mean? Tino Ndia. No, Tino Ndia. Always Tino. There. Ngubane u Tino. How long is the news? Tino Ndia and the news. Well, I think, maybe they're asking about that guy. Okay, Tino, go sit down. Time to work. What are you guys playing? Olive, I'm too good. Should I play Jack Fraser and Dara Jaya? Hey, come on, Kosha, it's on. is your battery? Like 20%. I might make it. Might make it? Well, let's go then. Perspective. We coming to you live from Powerhouse here in Houghton in Johannesburg. Oliver Mtukus, hey, ushering us into this hour, this roundtable, Africa roundtable, focusing on Zimbabwe. I'll have Oliver Mtukuzi any day. But tonight he says, "Help me, Lord. Hear me, Lord." I'm sure that's a prayer of many, many Zimbabweans. You say, "Why did you do this to us?" Hear me, Lord.
my guest tonight, Aisi Lumumba, former ZANU PF youth leader, as well as Tino Mambeu, who is a, a representative of Zimbabwe's Exiles Forum. Gentlemen, welcome to Johannesburg. Man, it's a good city. It's, it's incredible to be in a city where things are functional. It's incredible to be in a city where there's roads, no potholes. It's incredible to be in a city where you can actually swipe your card and, and, it works. Is, and the transaction goes through. I mean, what a city. What frustrates me the most is we're separated by mortar and brick. We're oh, separated man. by a border, just mortar and brick. Man, so man, man, it's good man, to be man. in your city, man. We can't stay long because we must ultimately go back and fight. So we're only here for, at least I'm only here for the night. Yeah. But hey, thank you for having me, guys. No, thank you for coming through. And Tino, thank you and also welcome. Uh, we, we often do what we call Africa Roundtable, where we just really look at uh, what's happening in the continent and what challenges there are. Oh, the, you know, the, the continent is simply divided by artificial borders. Let's, let's face it. Problems that uh, you are facing, we're facing here. And uh, tonight we just want to, 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 to say to you, and on, on, on behalf of many, many people, that we, we, we are we sol in solidarity with you whatever it is that uh, is facing you. Last week we saw your president firing uh, uh, his, uh, his deputy. We understand he's going to stand for office one more time. Can you just paint me a picture about you know, how Zimbabweans are feeling? And, and obviously you can't speak for all Zimbabweans, mm -hmm. but you can give me a good sense of how Zimbabweans are feeling about your democracy right now. Well, to start off with, uh, you, you know, what Mugabe has actually done, he has actually put a, the last nail on his own coffin. Mm. We cannot have a president who is 94 trying to run for office. Mm. So Mugabe comes under the cover of, uh, 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 comes under the cover in trying to put his wife into the throne. We know that Mugabe stopped the running the country 10 years ago. And uh, the person that has been calling seriously, the shots, of course, of course, uh, he's uh, he's sleeping all the time. You have seen him sleeping the United Nations. Yeah. You have slim, seen him almost falling. He's actually a man that has failed in uh, in the execution of his duties. So what does he do? He says, "No, I'm running for president in, uh, in the coming elections only so that he can field his wife." I think we should know that uh, as of today, the ten provinces of ZANU PF have fielded uh, Grace Mugabe to be sure. the vice president. Of, the, of 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 the NPF and ultimately the vice president of, of the country. So what that means is that uh, when you win the elections, obviously the person who is going to run for the, who is going to be the, the the wife. So we're in trouble. So yeah. so it's something that you can for sure from your own observation intelligence that indeed it is not just a set, set something that is said in jest that in fact Mugabe wants Grace to be the president. Well, the only person that Mugabe trusts to run that country or to protect his interests, mm. his business, uh, his vast business empire, is only his wife. He cannot trust Munangagwa, a man that has been on his side for the past 40 or so years. So he believes that the only person to carry uh, his legacy and to protect uh, whatever that he has gotten in a bad way is the wife. And uh, yeah. you know that uh, the wife is in for it and she's becoming another Trump in, uh, in Southern Africa. But t t tell me, uh, Mr. Lumumba there, man, can you uh, analyze for me why is it that if you believe that uh, Mugabe has not been running the country for the last 10 years, why is it that the opposition hasn't managed so far to, 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 to in a sense, gr grab power from him if, if the majority of Zimbabweans are, are convinced that he has, he has had his time and, uh, and, and in, in fact he has, he has made this contribution, but it's time for him to, to move on. Why is it that you still sit in a situation where he thinks he's bold enough to, is, to even run one more time at 94? You know, let me put something in categorical perspective. Mm. His age doesn't bother me. Okay, mm. I want to say that of his age. He could be 19 years old. That doesn't bother me. His, the amount of terms he wants to do. Doesn't bother me neither. I mean, in Germany right now, Angela Merkel is doing a fourth term. Mm. Okay, in, say in, in, uh, in Rwanda, Paul Kagame is going for a third term. That's not what bothers me. What bothers me is, can you get the job done? That is the only mark we are supposed to be basing anything off of. Can Mugabe get the job done? Now, what is the job? The job is providing a pathway for prosperity for the people of Zimbabwe. Mm. If I am a young Zimbabwean mm. and I am asked, how are you going to be prosperous? Mm. My version of prosperity might be to access a good school. Mm. Your version of prosperity might be to take care of your sick mother. Whatever our different versions of prosperity are, they ought to be a pathway to get there. This is what Mugabe has failed. 
So when we focus on the job and we stop focusing on his personality, his wife's personality, his age, his wife's age, we get to a point where we can start answering the question you asked, which is where has the opposition been? Yes. The trouble we've had with the opposition is yes. this. For too long in Zimbabwe, we've had personality politics. So we spend more time talking about who is going to take over the country. Yeah. We don't spend half as, as much time talking about what do they want to do with the country. And so the con our conversation is very flawed. We're talking about who takes over, not what do they want to do. However, 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 Zimbabweans across the world, okay, in this country included, are now at a tipping point where they now have this feeling inside of them where they realize we could actually have a silver bullet to reimagine a new Zimbabwe. Zimbabweans are starting to think about what does a new Zimbabwe look like that they can go back home to, that they can take their children back home to. So the opposition doesn't matter. What matters to me, my brother, is the Zimbabwean people. And I think as they rise, as they find their voice, I call that a generational convergence. As we get to that generational convergence, mm. we are finally, finally, finally going to see a new Zimbabwe. I call it a new Zimbabwe because I was, I'm 29 years old, okay? I've never known anything outside Robert Mugabe. My mother has never known anything outside of Robert Mugabe. Mm. She kind of, you know, I feel so so much pity for her because yeah. she went from... So Mugabe has been in power longer than you've been alive. Of course. What are you going to do to change the lot of Zimbabweans? Because it looks like Mugabe has a grip on the army, has a grip on, 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 the, on the ruling party. And, and uh, you know, if, 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 if his track record is anything to go by... Yeah. We must believe him when he says he's going to stand again next year. And, and, and he is going to stand. But the issue is not, is Mugabe going to stand? The issue is, are Zimbabweans going to stand up too? Because now, let me give you the statistical numbers. Here are the, 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 the figures, the, the arithmetic. Yeah. In the last election, you had 3 million people who voted. 2 million for Zanopia, 1 million for MDC. Mm. The virgin vote, that is under the age of 40, that has never voted in Zimbabwe, mm. is 4.5 million people. Mm. So there is 4.5 million who have never voted in the country, who for some whatever reason have either believed their vote doesn't matter or they've simply been uh, apathetic to the, to the yeah. process. If we wake up this virgin vote, I'm not even talking about votes out of Zimbabwe, of Zimbabwe, I'm talking votes in Zimbabwe. Yeah. We wake up this virgin vote, we can wake up a beast that's been sleeping. People know who they are not voting for in the next election. Sure they're they, very clear. But they're not they just to, don't know who they're voting for instead. You're not going to wake them up during the election. Have you started waking them up We now? are doing it right now. I, the, the reason I'm in Johannesburg right now, I had a meeting earlier this morning with a man called uh, Joseph uh, Busha. Joseph Busha has actually put in a program where he's transporting Zimbabweans in South Africa at his cost to the nearest border so that they can register and make sure that they can vote at the nearest border. He's put commissioners at the border. Right now we are on the ground. I put up a GoFundMe page. People can find it on my Facebook page. We're going into every province, my brother. We're mm. getting young people out of every province. In my constituency where I live in, mm. we've got the highest turnout of virgin voters right now. Highest mm. turnout. So we're not playing because we understand that what is ahead of us is a choice. A choice between sticking with the past or shaping a new future for our country. I can tell you for a fact, I'm not going to be ruled by Grace Mugabe. Not me. Grace yeah. Mugabe can rule everybody. Grace Mugabe is not going to govern me. I am, you know, her goblin granddad is enough. But her? <laughs> oh, she can forget it. Tito, Grace Mugabe is Tito, not going to be my president. The, the, the <laughs> yeah, viva Zimbabwe indeed. Uh, uh, Tino, tell me, in terms of the, this Zimbabwe's exiles forum, there's, there's, there's always this dichotomy, that, or dichotomous, what can you what, what can you call it a setup where in South Africa alone we're talking millions of Zimbabwe's who, who are here and uh, uh, people are asking does it mean they are being here they have given up right on on, on changing Zimbabwe because if uh, what uh, 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 Mr. Mamba here is, is saying is true right it means that you're, you're, you have millions of people to mobilize and transport to the borders can you tell me a little bit about what you what what the feeling of Zimbabweans who are in South Africa are about the politics of Zimbabwe? Are they resigning themselves to live pe uh, for, for, for forever in exile, or is there a, a burning desire to go back home and fix things there? You come up with a very good question, but now before I could answer you, I think we should go back to the Zimbabwean situation. Where does it come from, and how did we get here? Right uh, from the inception of uh, real opposition politics. That is around about 99 when, uh, 1999, when the MDCT was formed. Uh, when the MDC was formed, uh, people realized that uh, there were problems in, uh, in terms of uh, governance by ZANPF. So as they, were, as they realized those problems, then, uh, you know, uh, ZANPF went to a referendum and they were defeated. 
after the defeating the referendum, uh, Zanu PF then took farms by force, which is in a way good to give people the, to give people back their land. We support that very much. But now, after that, we have tried and we have gone into several elections, of which those elections have been rigged. And the Zimbabwean scenario has only been worsened by the effort of, um, of our regional leaders. You will remember that um, around 2008, we were, we were in a very good position, and the opposition then managed to beat uh, President Mugabe in elections. But even after beating Mugabe in elections, they could not take over power because the results were manipulated. And uh, during that time, we had a president here in South Africa who was uh, Comrade Tawambek. Comrade Tawambek could not do much for the people of Zimbabwe, resulting in this menace of uh, refugees that crossed over the border coming here. So the people of Zimbabwe that are here are not really enjoying their stay because some of them are staying under the bridges, some of them are staying in unelectrified buildings, and they really want to go back. And some of them are even working without pay. We understand that those are concerns and uh, we are facing such problems each and every day of our lives in South Africa. So to say that we are enjoying or we want to be here, we don't want to be here. We want our situation to be rectified. And we are doing all we can as the Zimbabwe Exiles Forum to make sure that the people that we have here are mobilized, they are taken home to, they are to be able to, to register and to, to what at the end of the day. Mm. But it's a regional problem. And the, the situation that you see right now of the infighting within the LPF, where uh, Munangagwa has been chased away. Munangagwa is not one person. Munangagwa is an PF. And you, you would have known that going to be, uh, those are going to be arrested, they will be retributions. And those people, where are they going to go? They will flock into the diaspora again. But the message still remains. We need to make sure that people go out there and vote. But mm. we cannot do it alone. We have got to make sure that we work together with yeah. all people. Is the, is the opposition movement uh, alive and well in exile or not? In your, in your understanding? Well, in exile, the people that are here are mostly concerned about their welfare. They are looking at the bread and butter issues to make sure that they are able to send money home. We do have uh, programs that happen here, here and there. We go to the farms, we speak to the people, try to mobilize people to conscientize them about going back uh, home to vote. And uh, that, that is what we have been doing so far. So the coming of uh, guys uh, like Esil Mumba from Viva Zimbabwe, it is a boost on the morale of Zimbabweans that think uh, probably we have reached a deadlock in terms of the political solution of the Zimbabwean crisis. Yeah. So we, we, we really feel that uh, that is a positive move and we continue to support them as the Zimbabwe Exodus Forum and we continue to work with them and we hope surely that uh, people are going to turn out in their numbers. Yeah. We don't want to continue burdening South Africa at the end of the day. We understand the demographics, uh, the demographics in South Africa and the challenges that uh, South Africa faces in terms of even employment and the health facilities, school facilities and all that. We don't want that to be happening. So we yeah. appeal as I speak right now, we, ask, we appeal to the SADC uh, regional body to say, SADC, we need you there. Put your eye in what is happening in Zimbabwe. Because if you do not put your eye, whatever yeah. that happens... You've got a sense that Sa SADC is complicit, uh, uh, Mr. Lumumba, uh, in what is happening in Zimbabwe or not? Here's the challenge we have with SADC. So the SADC protocol on defense, for example, uh, Zimbabwe was chairing it a few years ago. Now Zimbabwe is not chairing it. I believe South Africa is not chairing the SADC uh, troika or troika, defense. Yeah. Um, the, the, the challenge you now have is, so essentially you're saying it's, it's really the Minister of Defense in Zimbabwe versus the Minister of Defense in South Africa who are negotiating uh, how the game plays out. So I cannot imagine Jacob Zuma in his current state allowing for anything to happen to Robert Mugabe because Jacob Zuma needs to take example or lessons from Robert Mugabe. Jacob Zuma needs to say, Mugabe, you go first or I go second. So Mugabe reshuffles the cabinet, Jacob Zuma reshuffles the cabinet. <laughs> Mugabe fires a vice president, watch, Cyril Ramaphosa is on his way out. So, serious. I, I cannot imagine. What's your analysis of Mugabe firing the deputy, by the way? I think, the, I think Munangagwa should have seen it coming a long way back. There is nothing surprising or shocking about it. I spoke about this one year ago. Munangagwa should have seen it coming, that Robert is coming. But the trouble Munangagwa has had is he has been so loyal to the men that he forgot to be loyal to the people. And now he's in a conundrum where he must ultimately make a decision. Does he continue to be loyal to the men or does he now turn his turn around and get loyal to the party that he seems to love so much? If you read the letter he wrote today, what's very clear in his letter is, number one, the man is you know, he really demonstrated his loyalty to the president. Number two, he really demonstrated his loyalty to the party. Now he must choose one. I actually reckon that Munangagwa is the only person right now mm. who can save Robert Mugabe from his wife. Mm. When I see Mugabe on stage, that man is crying for help. 
That man is literally on stage and he is reading the script written or the speech written by his wife and he is begging to say to the world, can you save me? Because right now, this woman has got me under control. So, Munangagwa is the man who I believe can save Mugabe from himself and from his wife. But moral of the story, my brother, is Zimbabweans ultimately are the ones who have to charge, charge the course of their own destiny. Zimbabweans have to make a decision. Are they going to eat popcorn and sit down or are they going to stand up and be counted? That's ultimately the moral of the story. 0861-987-000 on the Africa uh, Roundtable uh, with Tino Mambeu as well as Aisi uh, Lumumba from Zimbabwe that are breaking down for us the politics of Zimbabwe and they're saying that, hey, it looks like Uge uh, uh, and uh, and uh, Uro and Mugabe are in the same WhatsApp group. In fact, there's a meme going around that says where Mugabe says, I will uh, die when uh, Zuma resigns and Zuma says, I'll resign yeah, when, when Mugabe, Mugabe dies. dies. So there is an African deadlock, isn't it? 0861 you can also tweet us at JJ Tabani at Power987. After the break, we take some of your calls. JJ, are we going to the break now? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> can you go and run this? Can you go, can you go doing it? He's, he's gonna, uh, 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 he's going to... How are we looking? Take two calls. Why? Because she wants to. Get oh. boyfriend die. Mom. Are you feeling JJ? You alright? Yes. Oh, but we need her to record. Look how many views we got right now. We got a thousand views, B. We got a thousand views, live views, man. People are staying up. You must bring your own camera. I mean, this is a producer of it. Yeah, she's producing the show right now. She's producing the show. Um, answer them so I go take calls. 0861. Oh, they're asking for the number? Oh, yeah, people can probably call there, right? Did you give them the number? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now you can stop it now. Should I stop it? Yeah. Unpacking the day's news from our perspective with JJ Tabani. And your own power perspective. We're coming to you live from Powerhouse here in Houghton in Johannesburg. It's the Africa Roundtable. Give us a ring. 0861 987 0 to join that conversation. Let's see here. We've got Freddy uh, Chikila in North Riding. Good evening, Freddy. How are you? My brother, you say it three times. I like that. That means you know me, man. You know me. Uruwangu, you ewe, Uruwangu. Thank you, my brother. I'm so glad you called. It's so beautiful to hear Zimbabwean voices in a foreign land. I want you to know I love you and we're doing this for you, man. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
All right, thank you so much, Freddy. There in North Riding, let's talk to Kabu in Ferenke. Hello, Kabu. I'm all right, how are you? I'm, I'm, I'm well. Also, uh, good evening, so to the gentleman. Thank you so much. Thank you, my brother. Good evening to you. Yes, gentlemen, uh, uh, I think you, what you are doing, guys, uh, you are doing a very good job. And I think it is high time that you know, Zimbabwe you know, has uh, that kind of people you know, uh, you know, revolting against uh, the Mugabe regime. You, you, you will appreciate that, you know, Mugabe, you know, when he came into power, uh, he was, a, he was a, a, very, a, a very good leader who was loved by everyone, you know. But again, the issue of power, you know, too much power on one man has over the years proved that, you know, these people, uh, they get corrupted, you know, they develop power and they, they, they threaten themselves in such a way that they become too strong. And, and, and I think that has been the disease of African leaders. I mean, you have to be off in Africa. Yeah. Our, our cool. So the least people can hear. Go for it. JJ. Are these working? Yeah. Increase the volume more. Thank you, Kabu. Any comment there, guys? Right. I will start uh, to refer to the issue of opposition mm. and uh, the effects of uh, white monopoly capital or the rainwix that you talk about. Mm. Well, as Zimbabweans, I think we attained our independence in 1980. And uh, after attaining our independence, we have seen how ZANPF has misruled the country. And uh, we have learned a lot from that. So where we are going now is we are going into a situation whereby we are saying Zimbabwe is open for all. When we say Zimbabwe is open for all, we mean mm -hmm. that Chinese, uh, Brazilians, Americans, South Africans, Zambians, Malawians, and even people from Mars are allowed to come and invest in Zimbabwe. So we follow an open economic policy which allows everybody to come and invest. But we will not become a puppet of any international body. We will not become a puppet of any international organization or individual. We will set rules that will determine the direction of things. We will set rules that will determine the way our investment is attracted. So we, we, we have got a clear plan on that and we are not going to fall victim to anybody. And when it comes to land, it is true that land has got to belong to the people. Uh, when Europeans came to Africa, they never had possessed any land. And we feel that uh, land has got to go back to its rightful owners. The problem that we have heard in Zimbabwe is land was given out to people as a way of a populist approach. When you do things in a populist approach, mm -hmm. you always make a blunder. So we need to see that uh, we correct the blunders that Mugabe made in terms of dishing out land. When land was being parceled out, you would see that the cronies in ZANPF ended up having millions and millions of acres of land when the ordinary person, uh, the, when the ordinary person yeah, in the village yeah. doesn't have the land. So we need to make sure that land is redistributed equally and amicably All so right. that everybody benefits. We're going to have to leave it there. Flora in the UK. Good evening, Flora. Oh, hello. Everybody knows me as Ramai, well, but Flora is my other name. Right. Yes, I was just going to... Uh, aren't we moving a bit forward with the land distribution? At the moment, I just want to know how... Everything that has just happened with Munanagwa and Mugabe, or Grace Mugabe, how does that affect us as citizens, and what is the way forward? Um, Archie? Okay, so, it's, it's, I mean, it's good to hear Ruramai ch checking in. She's always supporting us a lot. She's a very big supporter of our work. Let me answer your question. The question is, how does it affect us? It affects us because the circus ultimately 
affect how the country moves forward. You know, when I watch these rallies and I watch these ministers sitting surrounding the circus or the freak show, I realize that, or rather I ask myself the question, when, when are these people doing any work? At what time are the ministers actually going to their offices to do work? We still have an over 90% unemployment rate in the country. Mm -hmm. We still have uh, hospitals that don't have medicines in them. We still have an inflation rate that is about to go bananas and nose drive the economy. So what time do these people do work? So the, the freak show that is taking place in Zimbabwe mm -hmm. is the single greatest impediment to ZANU-PF actually doing any work. So we are affected by default. Mm. By default, we're affected. So Ruramai, who's in the UK, for example, yeah. she, can't, she can't come home to do exactly what she's doing in the UK back in Zimbabwe for one simple reason. ZANU-PF won't let her. Mm. So the only way she gets that access for herself mm. is we have got to get rid of ZANU-PF, starting with the grandfather and his granddaughter, Robert and Grace. Mm, 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 mm. Flora, your last bite. Do you think this is a good thing that Sanu is biting itself as we speak? Basically, I feel like, as a citizen, I feel like they've weakened themselves in the sense of the emperor is now stuck naked. I wrote it on my Facebook. But I believe now Sanu is at his weakest because of what they did to Munanagwa. And what? I know people are going to hate me for pronouncing Munanagwa's name very badly. But I'm sorry, I can't pronounce the man's name. It's okay, Ramai. It's, it's, it's Mnangagwa, but, but you, you're doing good. So, 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 so look, um, ZANU-PF got strong because of the people. You know, they didn't wake up one morning and they were strong. We made them strong. We made them strong either by our participation or by our lack of thereof. So we made ZANU-PF strong when it was strong. Likewise, it is the people who dismantle it. Jonathan Moyo once wrote about 14 years ago, we said ZANU-PF can only be destroyed from within. Thankfully, he is right. They are now self-imploding. They are now destroying themselves with the, uh, mm -hmm. from within. The only problem with ZANU-PF destroying itself from within is this, JJ. Mm -hmm. Robert Mugabe is no different from a suicide bomber. Mm -hmm. He is literally wearing a suicide vest. So he's saying, so I'm, he I'm about to die, with, with but I'm not dying alone. I'm taking all of you with me. So this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to push him off to say, listen, Robert, go ahead. You die, but don't take us with you. Good. Laura, Good. thank you so Good. much for calling us. Thank you. All right, Laura. Bye.